Greg here with another Vim screencast and I'm going to continue talking about one of my favorite topics which is focus. The idea that you should be able to divide your work up into splits and different windows and always have a very clear and intuitive sense of which one is the focused active split at any given time. Uh, so I talked about this back in episode 12. I went back and talked even more about it in episode 38. Um, and even just in the last screencast, number 47, I also touched on some recent improvements that I've made to my focus setup. Um, last night I made some more, so it's time for another screencast. Um, so specifically, uh, this is uh, where it all starts. Um, basically, the notion is that I want to turn off syntax highlighting for everything but the active split. And at first I wasn't sure whether this was going to be possible. Uh, turns out that it is possible, seems to work fine, so I'm going to show you how I did it. Um, so first of all, let's do a kind of before and after thing. Um, so I'm going to check out this original branch. I'm going to uh, open some file. <laughs> like, why not that one? Um, so you can see here, this is how I used to have set up. There is, it's mostly the background color and the status line that are changing uh, when I move between splits. Um, so now let's go back to where I was with all the new work. Um, we're going to open that same file again twice. So what's the difference here between the Vim on the left and the Vim on the right? Well, the Vim on the right, um, as you can see, only has syntax highlighting in the uh, active pane. Uh, so it, this actually might be a little bit better if I pick a file that has more stuff in it. So let's... Uh, uh, switch between my two views of my VMRC there. Um, so how is this done? Uh, we're effectively using a command in Vim to apply uh, syntax highlighting to uh, the visible range of the file. Um, if I scroll sufficiently, you see that the uh, syntax highlighting appears below um, and above the range. Um, this is pretty much just a performance optimization. If I'm in a 10,000 line file, I don't want to apply syntax highlighting to the whole thing. So I just target uh, the visible portion plus a little buffer above and below. Um, so let's have a look at how that is coded up. Um, so the main files of interest here are going to be the auto commands and also some related functionality in another file that I'll get to. Uh, so blur. So basically, when we have access to this match add pos function, uh, which was added to Vim sometime in 2014, I think around Vim 7.4 patch 500 or something. Um, so as long as you've got a Vim that's released in the last few years, you can use this. Um, it's basically going to run these two commands when we get focus in a window, it's going to call this focus window, and we lose focus, it's going to call blur window. Um, that's all there is to it on the auto command side. So let's have a look at the actual implementations, like blur window. So I'm reusing some functionality that I already may, uh, made in order to decide whether or not to use color column to paint the background. Uh, but basically, if you look at what that function does, it checks a blacklist, um, which is defined at the top here. Basically, in diffs, in undo tree, in nerd tree, and in quick fix listing, I don't want to do anything special. Um, so, for example, if I do nerd tree here, you'll notice that when I move away from nerd tree and it's not focused, it, it continues to look just like it did before. And similarly, if I search for something using ferret, um, the quick fix listing also doesn't have this treatment applied to it when it loses focus. Um, same with undo tree. Let's look at undo tree. Same deal there. Um, all of those maintain their, their appearance. And the reason why is they look really bad <laughs> when you apply this technique to them. So uh, let's go to where I was before, which was this file here. Okay, so somewhere down here, I was looking at blur window. Yeah, there we go. So what does blur window do? If we're in the kind of window that should be blurred when we lose focus, uh, then we're going to get the height of the terminal. Um, we're gonna use that height to cal calculate some slop. So basically if the window is this high, we're gonna take half the height of the window. We're gonna apply that slop to the top 
and the bottom regions immediately above and below the viewport. Um, so basically we calculate the start, which is um, this line call here. Uh, line W0 is going to return the line number of the top line in the viewport. And line W dollars is going to return the line number of the bottom line in the viewport. So basically with a little bit of arithmetic here, we can determine what are the lines that we should paint. Basically viewport plus, plus slop. Um, and then we're going to iterate in chunks of eight because Vim will only allow you to apply this kind of styling to eight lines at a time. Um, we're going to add, um, in this case, status line highlighting because that happens to look nice uh, in terms of still being readable, <laughs> um, but also de-emphasizing the, the coloring and the syntax highlighting. So we're going to apply that to chunks of eight lines at a time. Uh, we're going to give it a nice high priority so it overrides the other styles. And then we're going to keep track of some references that this match add pos function call uh, returns to us. Those references are going to be used to remove the special highlighting. Um, and so the special highlighting gets removed in this focus window command here. Same deal, we check is this the kind of, whoops, is this the kind of window that we should be doing this in at all? And if those references that we previously saved in a window local variable are there, then we delete them, which basically removes the override and allows the normal syntax highlighting to show through. Um, in my testing, I had a couple of bugs in this, which led me to call match delete on things that had already been removed, which raises an exception. Um, and so I have this catch in here. Once I fix the bugs, I haven't seen this catch block being uh, invoked anymore. So I suspect I probably don't need it. I'm just going to leave it in for a couple of days just to be sure. Um, and so that's really the totality of the trick. Um, so I'm pretty happy with this. Um, I've been using it for an hour now, so <laughs> it seems to work. Uh, so I'll have some links into how this was done in the show notes if you want to steal the idea from the dot files. Um, but thanks for watching.